Live from the Export Beer Garden Studios, this is The Agenda for the 6th of June. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. That's right, Export Ultra, the beer for here. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome along uh, and this, to the agenda this morning. Matt Heath. So good to be here. Um, 80 years since D-Day was is today. It? Yeah. D-Day. 6th of June, 1944. Wow. That man, give them a taste of kiwi, eh? Absolutely. We really, the Allies, we really shoved it right up their ass, didn't we? How lucky and lazy are we as yeah. a generation <laughs> that yeah. we didn't have to? The most whingingest. <laughs> the amount of whinging that goes on now, like, I know. like people just walking around today in twenty twenty four complaining about their lives. You're not bloody getting shot at by Germans, are you? Nah. Nah. You're not in a single man submarine going across the strait <laughs> and swimming to shore and taking sand samples before the invasion, are you? No. You're bloody not, are you? But you're whinging more than any of those people. There's not the average New Zealand today whinges more than the biggest whinger yeah. in, in the Allied forces back in the day. The diggers. Exact don't like just thank thank the Lord that you weren't born a hundred years ago, you lazy yeah, you're piece whinging. of shit. Shit. <laughs> anyway, speaking of whinging, <laughs> I've got a whinge with you. Okay. Uh-oh. So yesterday we didn't. The agenda wasn't on yesterday. I had to get a, a colonoscopy. Yeah, you did. Good and, on you. Um, good on you for getting that checked out. Yeah, it's important. Thanks, no, anyone that's seeing any of those symptoms, um, go Absolutely. and have a check. Like any, redness any, in the stool. Yeah. Any change in what's happening? Get up down there. there. Get up there. Get, go, get up go, there. But, go see a doctor and get up there. Absolutely. But uh, I uh, there's a procedure. There's 24 hours before the procedure, which mm. I must admit is the hardest part. The procedure itself is an absolute dream. Oh, it's a pleasure. A- absolute pleasure. Um, but 24 hours beforehand, you have to stop eating uh, and you can only drink water and you take these laxatives, which basically turn your stools into, into bumwees. Yeah. Now, you played your bumwees to me on Tuesday. Yeah. Now, your bumwees recording that you would, at the time you did share with everyone, and yeah. I'm good on you for doing it, it lasted about 20 or 30 seconds. Your yeah. one was like a Long. river. Yeah. yeah. And so that was my expectations for my right. stool. And so I sent you audio of my one. Yeah. Uh, and it was very much short and sharp. Yeah. It was, you know, four or five seconds. Powerful. Oh, I, it was powerful. Yeah. But my expectations were so, like, I'll, shall I play you? Um, here is here's mine. Yeah. Now, here you go. <laughs> The little dribble at the end. See, nice. that's it. That's it. That was that was all mine was. So, yeah. and your one was probably ten times the length. Of that. Anyway, oh, I've, I've got mine. I've got mine here. Do you want to, do you want to hear yeah, mine? Yeah. Like, I hope no one's eating. Or yeah. if um, you're eating and listening to this podcast, but your one. Okay, let's just, in the comparison. And you change gears. You're down to second here. This yeah. One. There you go. Yeah. See, so you keep on. I'm gonna go again. <laughs> no, see, this is... Okay, so I'm I go to the doctor and you go to the doctor and my biggest fear is I'm gonna shit all over them. Yeah. Because you're in a vulnerable position. Oh, they, yeah. they open you up. My big fear is I'm gonna shit all over his face. So at the consultation beforehand, it says, Have you got any questions? And I said, Yeah, I'm unsure if I've got rid of it all. Because I listened to a mate sent me a recording of him doing it, and first of all, obviously we've made that normal, but he went, What? <laughs> I said, oh, my, my mate got it done a few while ago and he sent me a recording of him and he was like, why would he do that? And I said, oh, that's just, you know, just shits and giggles, whatever, no, no pun intended. And he's like, okay. And I said, but his one, he sent it to me. It went for about 20 seconds. My one, and I got my phone out. He goes, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to hear it. And he goes, my ones are only four or five seconds. So I'm concerned that I haven't got rid of it all and I'm going to shit all over you. And he's like, you could see him laugh. Luigi, a great man. He goes, no, it's okay. You, if you haven't eaten anything for 24 hours, and it's 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 fine. You you won't, okay? Even if you did, we're not going to tell you anyway if you shed all over us because we wouldn't do that. And I was like, so I may have. I may have shed over him. Yeah, you, might, you wouldn't know. Because I wouldn't know because either yeah. the, 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 uh, the anaesthetist comes in, Charles, Big Charlie. Big Charlie sits down, and I say, what are, you, what are you giving me today, Charlie? What are you giving me today to send me into La La Land? And he goes, I'm actually giving you the same stuff that uh, Michael Jackson used to take. And I was like, oh, you beauty. I said, is it a full knockout? And he goes, oh, it's a sedative. So you might still be awake and you might hear voices, but you're not going to be really with it. And I was like, oh, okay. Anyway, they deliver it to me. First of all, they, you know, they take you in there and they, they 
hook you up to IV and everything and put the monitors on you. And then they say, roll on your side and then knees to the chest. And that's the vulnerable part when you're in the fetal. And then I just passed out. And then I woke up in the recovery room. Yeah, right. Uh, nothing. I wasn't, can't rem- wasn't talking. I was just out to it. And I was like, if Michael Jackson was taking these yeah. recreationally, no wonder his heart said, fuck you, and yeah. stopped. It's, it's, it's like blackout drugs. But it feels so good. Oh, yeah. Um, you feel so happy. You could see why if you're Michael Jackson, if you're Michael Jackson's doctor, and you know, he's so famous and powerful and you're stoked to be his doctor, you don't want to lose the job. Michael Jackson really wants those drugs because you're not going to feel any better than you do when you're on those drugs. And the doctor goes, oh, Christ, I'm going to have to give him. Keeps giving them, eventually yeah. c- kills him. But I, I can you, – your life on those drugs is ev- – there's no problems. Oh, it was – yeah. Anyway, if it, that's not a recreational drug I'm going to get into. No. Jesus. Oh, that would be the end of it. The totally. Fact, the, no wonder it's a problem. Yeah. That, that's the end of it. That's, that, that's the end of you bothering to be have, do anything ever again in your life. Yeah. You just end up in a – Small room with nothing on the walls, just like a mattress in the corner and a small sheet and, and feces everywhere. That's so, how you'd end up and you'd be happy. Yeah. So uh, apologies to Dr. Luigi Sussman um, if I did shit all over you. Um, you great took name. A, you took it like a man. Luigi Sussman. <laughs> yeah, you took it like a man. Great, great, great name. I bet, look, and in all seriousness, get it. That was the easiest thing I've yeah. ever done. You don't have to eat for 24 hours. Big deal. Yeah. Um, and and, and Dihen would said, you know, like, they reckon if everyone got that screening done, you know, at 30, which isn't isn't really the time you need to do it. But if everyone got it at 30, they reckon they would get rid of most of bowel, yeah. bowel cancer. because 50, I think, is when you should definitely get it yeah. done. Yeah, uh, but, but but like, you know, as, as soon as you're worried or as soon as you have anything to look at, then yeah. just do it because, I mean, not doing it, the, 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 the potential result of not doing it is so much bigger than the annoyance and oh. the difficulty of getting it done and also the peace of mind you get from getting it done. Totally, and also... The great comedy you can get from sending your mates the audio yeah. clippings of you doing bumwees. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, and, and, and if you've got any of that, then send it through to the Talkback Faction oof. on your iHeartRadio app, and like we'd love to hear your bumwees on the Agenda podcast. We've been down this road. Unfortunately, we have. When people were sending them from showers, and then we said, oh, it's just a matter of time before someone's doing a dump. And sure enough, someone was like... Yeah. Yeah, g'day, it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, let's get into All some, right, let's let's, do okay, it. Let's get into okay. some support. Last night was state of O, state versus state, mate versus mate. Um, one thing to come out of it. Uh, a murder. Um, there was a murder seven <laughs> minutes on early, debut. Early on murder. A Joseph, guy, a man, and a man we used to love that we don't love now. Oh, Joseph Saoeli, in within seven minutes on debut, ripped <laughs> the head, the beautiful <laughs> manicured head of Reese Walsh off. And you know what? 10 years ago when Mark Guy, or 15, 20 years ago when Mark Guy was beating the crap out of Wally Lewis, would have been play on. Yeah. Not today, ladies and gentlemen, not today. Uh, he got sent off, um, but there was a great um, video stream from the guys from uh, Hello Sport who do these watch-alongs, and uh, this is their reaction to the head high. Do not bend him. I mean, don't rat him. Don't no, rat no, him. No, no, he's been a thousand percent. Yeah, he's going to bend it. He's, he's going to rat it. No, he's no, not no, 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 he won't rat him. Oh, 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 off, oh, off, oh my off. God. Fuck off. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my God. It oh, was no. accidental. He oh, slipped into it. You oh, can't. my oh, God. Game's gone soft. <laughs> game's gone <laughs> soft. So there you go. I love that, Aussie. Game's gone soft. Um, Reese, the, the, the lovely Reese Walsh that we loved, and then I hated him so much when the Broncos knocked uh, us out, um, the Warriors out. I hated him so much, loved him so much, hated him so so much. But did you see that interview with him afterwards? And, you know, he's saying it wasn't too bad, but he didn't seem to be able to remember what had happened. He, it was a little <laughs> bit foggy for him. This is great. This is Rugby League because he got – he passed his HIA. Yeah. So he got knocked the F out, <laughs> like a massive shoulder to the head. Passes HIA, but since it was a category one tackle, he had he wasn't allowed to come back on, even though yeah. he passes HIA. So great to see that that's going to add a little bit of niggle to the next game. It, it certainly is, but I, I mean I'm not saying it's intentional. He did sort of slip a bit low, but you got to say it was a perfect victory for New South Wales because oh. then they're down, <laughs> down a man for the whole rest, rest of the game. Yeah. Seven minutes, take a guy's head off. <laughs> but they're at least they're allowed thirteen. New South Wales down to twelve. Yeah. For the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah, but, so, yeah, but that, that's what I mean. Player. From the point of view of New oh, South yeah. Wales, you, you've, you've got this, but you're now you're playing the game for 12. Yeah, so so you, you may have enforced some kind of... <laughs> do you think that was the... Do you think they actually targeted Reese Walsh? I don't think so, because he would have had to have slipped a bit lower to hit him the way he hit him. I mean, he, he, he did was, lead with the shoulder. He was 
he was going down. I reckon there were yeah, many games. He was going down. I don't know. Would you would you be able to get someone on debut? You know, to go. Okay, mate. I've got to take one for the. Te- you got to take one for the team. What you got to take? Reese Walsh just fucking head off in the first ten. <laughs> It's like it's a terrible strategy. Well, the, have you heard the, um, the great famous story that gets retold and retold about Peter Fadilofa? Oh yeah, his first uh, when he used to play for Auckland uh, NPC team, and he was, you know, he was fresh into New Zealand. He didn't speak a lot of English, Peter Fadilofa, um, and at half time, um, the coach apparently, uh, oh, well, being John Hart or someone, like got Peter Fadilofa in the corner and said, "You are the biggest guy on the field. I need you to get ferocious. I need you to." Go out there and get ferocious, okay? And he's like, you know, yes, boss, whatever, yeah. And he goes out and plays an absolute blinder of a second half. And in the changing room, you know, the coach pats him on the back. Everyone goes, mate, fucking Fats had an awesome game. And then he pulled the coach aside and he's like, I think he coached, but uh, he goes, who is ferocious? (laughs) That's a good story. (laughs) That's a great story. That's a good story. You got a story like that that'll get you through a lot of um, rugby uh, charity lunches. Yeah, absolutely. Well, sit on that. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was Peter Fats. Anyway, um, in the end, Queensland absolutely humped them. A record score, thirty-eight points to ten. Um, blew all sorts of records out of the water. Um, old poor old uh, Di Henry, who's a New South Wales fan, had to call it last night on Sky yeah, Sport Nine. Yeah, he, he he sounded he sounded broken at the end of that. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what. Um, Respect to Ben Hurley because I was shooting a TV show with him yes. out in Henderson till I think we finished up shooting at 10 past 10. I get home and he hasn't gone home. <laughs> he went straight here. <laughs> he came straight here and jumped on the mic. Yeah, well, he was he was due. I was like, what's going on? He thought it, things would be over by then because he committed to it. And then last night, yesterday, sent me a panic text saying, yeah. I'm doing some shooting out in Henderson. We haven't finished till half 10. So I said, oh, it's okay. The pants man can be sidelined. Uh, and Di was like, yeah, you've seen me commentate. Eh? I could probably I can talk for eighty minutes yeah. without no right. problems. Yeah. But I said no, no, I'd be good. And he said I'll just come straight there for the second half. And I was like, yeah, good on you. Yeah, you good on you, Ben Hurley. Commitment, Ben Hurley. But he was, he's, he's a big he's a big Queensland man, so he yeah. would have come here with a massive heart on. He was just half. been racing in down the motorway <laughs> with a massive heart on at one hundred and forty k <laughs> to get to the studio to make die do do wear it. Do you think that, that's a defence in court if you get done speeding? One hundred and forty k. I was hard. Yeah, I was hard for the maroons. Yeah, I couldn't control Maroons. myself. It's like I can't control that, and I can't control my foot when it's. Mate, I'm the, I'm the good guy on this. Yeah, I've just been shooting a TV show to ten thirty. I'm I'm the good guy here. I'm trying to get in to do a bloody commentary for the state of O, mate. Yeah. I'm, not my, the vil- I'm not the villain here. Am I down? Why is he Australian? Is, I don't know. <laughs> is my <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> is your da- if it's down? I know for a fact that Ben Hurley's downstairs is connected to his right foot. Yeah, it is. And so when he's hard, the yeah. right foot tenses and goes forward. Yeah. So he's accelerating. Fully, yeah. fully hard. Yeah, he's yeah. a victim in this. Yeah, anyway, uh, quick, we'll take a quick break here and we'll be back with some sports washing uh, and some T20 World Cup action. Okay, sports washing, Matt Heath. Uh, Mania Stewart and I uh, have said, bring on the washing. We're, we're filthy. We need to be washed. When uh, someone from the Middle East is going to take over the, the small podcast niche world of the agenda. Yeah. And we ha- we'll happily do it from Riyadh. Well, how we'll do it from I'm in. Doha. I'm in. Wash us. I don't give a shit about atrocities. I've got flies all around me, okay? I don't care. Yeah. Let's look, do it. I'll ban my wife from driving. All yeah. that. All everything. I'll wear a burka. Yeah. Burka. Lurka. I, all the whole hun- lot. Hundy. Anyway. In. So, so $1.6 billion for, for some rugger. Yeah, so it's getting guitar. close. It's getting close. That's what I'm saying. It's getting close. So I mean, we're, we've asked for it. Yeah. We're, we're, we've opened the door. They're, they're knocking on everyone else's door. Yeah. We've got ours ajar. We're like, come on in. Come it, on in. Do you know in. what? It's brilliant because they just don't piss around. I don't know. This has been said a lot, but it's just so much money that it doesn't matter if you're Greta Thunberg, <laughs> you're going to take it. <laughs> you know, it's just, there's there's that saying, you know, money talks, bullshit walks. Yeah. And it's so true. So you you come in with something that people could probably pick up for 100 million. Yeah. And you go, 1.6 billion. Yeah. And they go, um, well, you've just. The asking price is only a hundred. Yeah. 1.6 <laughs> billion. We'll do it for one twenty. No, we want to give you one point six billion. It's so much freaking money so, that, yeah. that that it's there's no question. I yeah. mean, the fact that the, it's this country of three hundred thousand who have never shown any interest in rugby. No worries. No, it doesn't uh, matter. Don't care. Don't so, care. So Qatar, they're closing in. Like you said, one point six million dollar deal to host billion the billion. Sorry, rugby's nations championship final for eight years. So this is the championship they're holding between World Cups. Yeah. So. 
uh, and they're hosted in. in uh, I mean, the whole thing. A, the whole thing is a bit of a, a rugby world cup killer. Oh, absolutely. But also, I think there's a part of it is uh, the Qatari royal family who are responsible for all this yeah. and the Qatari investment fund and all that. They're like, hey, we built these stadiums for the FIFA. Yeah, and right. And they're like, we need to use them. And it was like, wow, we're going to have to get teams over here. So I don't care. Just can you make, it, make out like you're using them, okay? The, the amount of money they have, they could fly New Zealand crowds over there to watch. Oh. They could fly in 20,000 Kiwis. We, well, we've got a direct flight from Qatar from yeah. Auckland, so just constantly fly us over there. Yeah, we'll go to the Done. games. Just move us over there. We don't give a shit. Move move 100,000 All Blacks fans to Doha. Yeah. Put them up in a village. Yeah. Uh, they can talk about code and put scrums down at night. and It'll look bloody and, great. And then go go to the game. It's it's a real, like, because if you look at it, it's all the, the Six Nation teams and it's the Sanzar teams, and yeah. then it's going to be probably Japan and Fiji. Yeah. Boy, that's that's rough being out in the cold on that, isn't it? If you're, if you're, if you're out in the cold on that tournament, yeah. like, I don't know, Samoa and Tonga and the U.S.? Yeah, I don't know. Canada, Georgia's not in there. So, like, they're calling it the Rugby Super Bowl. Yeah. Which, what happens, I think, they, they said that they would host the, the finals of it, so I think they have it for a week, and then they have the semis there and the final. Uh, but the preliminary games are still played around the world, a kind of a Champions League type thing. And it just always ends up in it's, Qatar. I'm going. I'm going to Super Bowl. I'll go. I'm going to, they need to call it something else. So when is that, when's the first one? 2026? Yeah. Well, yep. they need a new name for it though. I can't call it Super Bowl. What's a good What's a good rugby analogy? The Super Cup. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's um, a bit stink, doesn't it? The um, the, the does it have to have super in it? Probably a. Eh? Yeah. Um, the super scrum. The super vessel. The line out. <laughs> the, the ruck. The super ruck. The super ruck. <laughs> the the ruck, ruck your face. Um, ruck rucking. Me. Ruck me. Ruck me. Uh, ruck me. It's the super final. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's see. It'll be called something amazing, like the Nas- Nations Championship Cup. But but that's, that's, rugby's going to be so weird now because you know, like the Six Nations is is that we've got the Rugby Championship, we've got this going on, we've got the World Cup every four years. It's 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 going to be interesting, isn't it? Like it is going to be. It's but it's a it's going to be. So, s- so, but, but we're also we're also trying to bring in tours as well. So we're also on top of that. We also want to <laughs> a full have, Lions you know, tour, full Lions tour. Um, I'll and tell you what, talk of tours, tours uh, to New Zealand again. A Lions are touring next year to Australia. Yeah. And I didn't know. Someone just pointed it out to me. But we should target Adelaide in, I think, maybe the 12th of July next year because it's an Anzac 15 versus the Lions on a Saturday at the Adelaide Oval. Oh, really? Yeah. So that and Adelaide is a good time. That new stadium is a good time. And it's going to be an Anzac 15. It's probably made up of uh, kind of super rugby players from both sides against the Lions. And I was like, shit, yeah. I'm yeah. into that. Let's target yeah. that. Let's target that. Yeah. So look out for the uh, Ultra Beer Garden tour to Adelaide. Shit, yeah. A mini yeah. tour to Adelaide. Shit, yeah. Um, speaking of uh, which T20 World Cup has got underway. It's yeah. It's kind of underway, but since we haven't played yet, I don't really care. No, so Saturday. Saturday, 11.30 in the morning. We've got the uh, the the battle that everyone in America is waiting for, New Zealand versus Afghanistan. Yeah, they <laughs> They are. I want. I wonder if the US are playing Afghanistan in America. Well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, because they've played before, but not yeah. at cricket. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that might be. Uh, uh, you, you'd be putting your money on Afghanistan there, wouldn't you? On that particular that, skirmish. Well, and any other skirmish, I think. They, you yeah, know, they they win eventually, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. That that it might. You know, it's not going to. Uh, you know, it wasn't a twenty-over contest, but they eventually no. they just held out. It was. <laughs> Um, so Pakistan smashed Ireland by eight wickets. No one really cares because it's a, it's, a, it's a new format here. They're going back to the, the super, super sixes. So um, top two teams go through to super sixes. Then it's like basic knockout to do the you, final. Do you think there's too many World R- Cricket World Cups? Um, no. You don't? No, I don't. I think there's, a, there's, 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 there's a, been a backup of them. Yeah, there's been a bit. Ba- yeah, people are a bit confused because. The 50 over. We had last year, we had um, the Aussie one. Yeah. Because they had been delayed from COVID. Yeah, but then yeah. we had India, Australia, and this one all put into like three years. So people yeah. are like, why is there so many T20 World Cups? It should only be every two years. Yeah, right. So that is the idea, but it just, it's just because yeah, it's just COVID. Kind of, and if it moves at all, it really backs it up, you know, to like being under a year, 360, yeah. 300, whatever days. But it is interesting because even though the, uh, the 50 over game is kind of waning in importance, the 50 over 
World Cup seems to be the real World Cup, and the yep. T Twenty One feels a bit novelty, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, and it kind of. I like the fact that the T Twenty anyone can really win. Like, yeah. like West Indies have won it a couple of times. You know, Pakistan have won it. Like, you know, people teams teams that, and then you look at fifty over. West Indies are never going to win the fifty over again, ever. I don't think. No. Um, it's it is true cricket because you can have proper cricket players in there. It has ebbs and flows. It's a mini test match. You can lose five wickets and be at a hundred, but you can make it back and get two twenty. You know, but where yeah. you lose five wickets in T twenty, you're gone. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. First ten overs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like it in the fact that it's over in three and a half weeks. Yeah. So it starts now. It's all over. The final is in like two and a half weeks' time. Yeah. So I, I quite like that that it's yes. over and over and it's done because yeah. the fifty over takes about eight weeks. It takes yeah. Quite it a long takes time. a long time. Yeah. Um, and then there's the World Test Championship, but I don't think any lay person or a person who's not really interested in cricket should even worry about the World Test Championship. I think that's for cricket nerds like plus us. We, plus, we already won it, so it's yeah. over. But I don't, that's one you don't try and don't try and explain the World Test Championship to someone just getting into cricket. Yeah, don't bother. Just say like ah, it's another. I saw, I saw um, an onion, you know, an onion post, yeah. and it was like you know the the American satir- satirical newspaper, and it said um, uh, to excite fans. Cricket shortened to seven days. <laughs> seven day games, because the Americans don't understand it at all. They're like, they don't understand that they're not playing the test version of it. Yeah, they're was, playing the T Twenty version. Yeah. It's, it's confusing. There's a lot of people over there just sit down and they're scratching their head. Yeah, because they would have been like, I thought this was a five day game. Yeah, yeah. It's only three hours now. No, 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 no. No, there's one day ones and there's there's T Twenty ones. It's like my God, you know they don't do that with baseball, do they? They don't do it with. It's half the innings. But that's what we do with our sports, don't we? Because we've got like league, uh, rugby union. Sevens. Sevens. And then you bring in Australia. You've got the AFL. You know, we just divide it up. Divide, and divide it up. Divide yep. it. Divide, 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 divide the audiences. That's divide the audiences. You know, split it all up. Um, so uh, the Aussies take on Oman today. Oman. Oman actually aren't too bad. There's quite a big you know, Indian expat yeah. and Southeast Asian expat population in Oman. So they'll go all right. Well, PNG um, turned up, didn't they? Yeah, look, there's some teams in there that I might. Uganda? I mean, yeah. I didn't know how much cricket's played in Uganda, but uh, they're obviously doing it for a reason. T20, you can expand it to, you know, 20 yeah. teams, and it's, yeah. it's okay. So yeah. good on them. Yeah. That. But it all kicks off for New Zealand on Saturday. It's a super Saturday because we've got 11.30, New Zealand, Afghanistan, Sky Sport 9. We're commentating that. Uh, I think it's me, uh, yourself, and Lee Baker. Oh, what a team. Doing that one. And then straight into Super Rugby. At uh, four o'clock, and then seven thirty, and yeah. then Warriors at seven thirty. Now seven, sorry, and then Warriors at seven thirty. So it's a super Saturday. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to get because I'm I'm off to Eden Park to watch the Blues, um, and I'm like, well, you're going to you're going to have to ha- ha- I'm going to have to complete radio silence on the Warriors, or just have the Warriors up on the. Well, that's what I did on with your, the Phoenix on your, I, on your in phone the bo- or something uh, in the box. Oh, I, all right. I, I turned the TV over to the the, the, when the Phoenix. In, when you're in the box, you, you can in do the, that. in the box. I know, but there was people like you can't be sitting here watching soccer, mate. You're in the box at Eden Park for the footy, but you know. Well, I, 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 you can. I, you can I, I mean, you, people say you can't, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you mean you can't? <laughs> right, um, NBA Finals. They kick off uh, Friday. The Celtics versus the Mavs. You following much yet? I'd say tell my nice Stuart. It's about now I get interested in the NBA. Yeah, same. Absolutely. There's so many meaningless games. It goes for so long. There's thousands of games that everyone knows doesn't count. Yeah. And then you get to this point, and then even only just starts to heat up now. Um, but but this is where, this is this is when you join basketball. Uh, this is this is the bandwagon. Jump this, on now. Absolutely, it is the bandwagon. I'm I'm torn actually because I love Boston Celtics and I love their fans. Yeah. I love how rugged their fans are and they turn up with those big gold necklaces. Yeah. and they're just absolute mutants. Yeah. But I also love the Mavs because I lo- I quite like Luka Doncic. I, I quite like the fact that he carves up. He's very unassuming kind of. I know people a lot of people hate him, but I yeah. quite, I quite like him. Yeah. So I'm a bit torn actually. I, I, I don't know. I listen to Bill Burr and Bill Simmons, so like I'm very. I'm very down the Boston hole. Oh, okay. You, yeah. You're fully invested in the yeah. Celtics. Um, Plus, I had a pair of um, Larry Bird socks when I was growing up. With, did they go all the way? Yeah, all the way up. <laughs> and and I was very happy with those socks. So, you know, that was... That Larry Bird. <laughs> Just looking back at footage of Larry Bird, what is going on there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> terrible looking human being. <laughs> So good though, so good, but just unusual. Yeah, in all in all shapes. And the thing is, he looked like a bird. He looked like he, big, looked, he looked like a bird. He looked like Big Bird off Sesame Street. That was confusing as a child that yeah. he looked like a bird. Also, that he plays in slow motion. It 
Yeah, yeah. He, he looks like a highlights reel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit like Jokic. He's a bit yeah. like that. He's yeah. he plays in slow mo. He's very the, he's just in a similar mold. Yeah. So that kicks off on Friday. Um, so at the moment, um, uh, I, I look at the we'll look at the odds tomorrow with our sports book on that because heaps of money, loads of money come in on the NBA with the TAB. So we'll have a look at the odds tomorrow. But um, uh, for now, let's uh, take a quick break because we've got some more yours pleases oh, that good. have come in. Hopefully none with loose stools. Yeah, no uh, bum ways yet. That'll be coming in um, on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So oh, on tom- Friday, tomorrow. Yeah, Friday, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're back uh, with yours please. Yours please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. Right, uh, but a yours please, but a feedback. We love the feedback that comes in uh, through our talkback function, the little microphone on your iHeart app. Um, if you are listening on iHeart, if you're not listening on iHeart, um, that's cool. We still love you. But uh, if you want to switch over to uh, iHeart, you can actually use this function and send us uh, often abusive messages. Yeah. Uh, call her yours, please. G'day, boys. Crispy Cock here. <clears throat> Don't worry. The lights are on. I'm just sick. Um, thoughts on the Crusaders fans since they haven't made the finals to jump the cook straight and support the Hurricanes. Uh, it's a big F you, middle finger to Auckland. Because uh, if they were to win, Aucklanders would be unbearable for the next uh, year. Anyway, who wrote? Good insights, Crispy Cock. Yeah, Crispy Cock's got, it's interesting there. I mean, I'm quite interested. The Crusaders fans, to be honest with you, they've been pretty quiet. They have been. They've been very quiet and a little humble. They have Uh, actually. A little humble. I I work with one every day, um, Mash. Yeah. and And he's just a little, they've had just an orgy of riches for so long, you know? It's it's not quite the same. It's not like a it's not like a, a lifetime of heartache, you know. So they but are, this is a little bit of heartache for them, but they've it been is quite, heartache. But you yeah. know what I mean. It's not. But I would I imagine mean, being, that, being an Otago fan going up against Canterbury your whole life. Yeah, that's heartache. Yes, that's real heartache. Just just absolutely creaming it for years and years and years and years and years, and then having a shitter. That's not proper heartache. What it? What I want to ask you is, you're obviously, you're a Blue Lander, you're born in the South, cheese roll in your mouth. Yeah. Although, interesting, we had Jeff Wilson on the show and I was full Lander when he was in. <laughs> oh, you were when he was in there? Yeah, oh, yeah he was in course. there, yeah, yeah. I didn't, um, didn't mention the Blues at so all. Is, well, who are the Crusaders fans' second favourite team? Is it the Highlanders? Surely. The Mainlanders? I don't know. I don't know if it is. So it must be the Canes then, because it's certainly I, not the I, Chiefs. I just get the feeling they're not like that, because everyone else in the country's second favourite team is the Highlanders. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, everyone loves them. But Canterbury, I'd love to hear this, because Canterbury, because, you know, like growing up down there, Canterbury just does not rate Otago at all. They just think it's a poo hole, and they rub it in all the time. And I just think that's they just wouldn't even look. That, they're such assholes that they don't even look south. They look north. Right, they okay. look north. All their all, all their hatred is north. They just hate Auckland. In fact, they it, they don't even they look over Wellington and hate Auckland. But I just don't think they even acknowledge South. So you reckon that Crispy Cox onto something here? That you reckon the Crusaders fan base just focus laser in onto the Hurricanes? I, th- I think I think that would be. I think that's more likely than them than them supporting the Highlanders. Oh, to be okay. fair, because there's no way the Chiefs will blues. There's no you can they they pretty much lump those two regions. Anything north of Topo, yeah, forget about oh, it. They right. hate That's just, it's, it could yeah. be Auckland, it could yeah. be Waikato, who it's disgusting. Yeah, to them, they're okay. revolted by it. So not a bad. Uh, and obviously, you said if the Blues win, you will know, crow about it. Of course, they'll crow about it because they haven't won it in so many. Yeah. So so would the Chiefs. Yeah, <laughs> and so will the so will the Hurricanes. They will be unbearable. My Hurricanes mates, they're going to be unbearable. But but will will people say it's a win with an asterisk? Because the Crusaders didn't make playoffs, so it's a win with an asterisk. <laughs> Have you won unless you've beaten? That's the kind of and, thing Manaya Stewart, because he always and, goes on about the member Super Rugby Aotearoa yeah. asterisk one, where yeah. the Blues and Crusaders didn't even play each other during round robin, and the Blues won it. Yeah, he still crows on about that. Yeah, so I think that's I think the Crusaders are kind of running a low key line that this is how arrogant they are, the Crusaders fans, that they're like, because we didn't make it, this isn't into the playoffs. You haven't really been tested in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Canterbury. <laughs> okay, next one, yours, please. With the T20 World Cup looming this coming Saturday, I'd just like to start the conversation far early. Um, can Joe Jerry, can you please make sure that G-Lane's passport is confiscated and hidden yeah. so he has no particular way at all of getting over to the West Indies? We don't need that man at the final. 
If anything, Lucia needs, we need a little bit of Black Caps glory. Come on, boys. Jeez. Fuck South Canterbury. Yeah. What was that at the end? Was that a bowel movement at the end, or did he just kick a can or something? If it was a bowel movement, it was a brick that he <laughs> dropped out of there. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so do we know where the is, if they picked where the final is going to be played? I think it's in Barbados again. That Barbados uh, Lord's Imitation Stadium. I love it. Um, I think it's Barbados. Let me, yeah. I'll quickly I'll quickly search this up. Um, because I have been to Barbados before uh, in a uh, ill-advised trip to watch the 50-over Cricket World Cup final when I booked it when I thought we were going to win the semi against Sri Lanka and I ended up watching um, us uh, Australia play Sri Lanka in the final. Um, and I got mugged and woke up on a beach with no belongings. So it was a, a great trip all round. So if we hang out your eye? What? Was there a sea hanging out your eye? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. I cannot remember. It was it's interesting. It's a thing to forget. <laughs> it was a big night. Yeah. Uh, right, let's look at the final. The final is on uh, June the 30th. And it is in... Oh, it doesn't say. Uh. It does not say. Um, but I'm picking it's going to be either Barbados or, or Trinidad. Yeah. Um, so, look, if we make the final, it's a tradition I have to go. Yeah. So, if we make the final, I am going. Um, uh, I need to break this curse, and there's only one way of doing it, and that is attending more games. Until how many we, until we win. hearts will you break on your way to breaking the curse, though? That's the as thing. many as I need to. Yeah, as many as I need to. Yeah, and uh, and that's just a fact. There's only way I'm going to break. It. Otherwise, what am I going to do? Just sit at home and get col- colonoscopies every Monday? Yeah, well, I could do that. Drugs well, up. well, I'm in an interesting situation with the uh, the Pinot Noir situation because I've drunk right through, and now we're in a good record. Keep going. I got. I got to keep going. into it. So I got two. I got uh, uh, this three. It's actually looking pretty good now. The Pinot Noir record. It's actually evening out. But we, we really need to do something good against the Cowboys. You, you got the reverse cowgirls on Saturday. You yeah. should win that. Back to full strength. Come on. We'll yeah. discuss that tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah. um, the, I know, look, you got to lean into the Pinot Noirs. Yeah. I, I reckon you I just give the finger to the Pinot Noirs. I mean, yeah. you got people like Manai Stewart yeah. who get upset about do, it. Do you know what's funny when when Manai Stewart on the very day that he really ripped into me, and I had low serotonin that day, so. <laughs> I was in no state to deal with it. I'd, it'd been a biggie, big weekend. I had nothing emotionally in the tank. Um, and the last bit of but, emotion, but, but, he just but, but beat you out see, of you. You always make things about you. And then the ne- very next minute, he posted a picture of himself. Oh, who was retiring? Ah, it was the final game for, God damn it, I can't remember. And, and, and Manaya posted a picture of himself on the ACC, himself photoshopped into a picture of a player retiring just behind it. And I was like, damn it. God damn it, damn it. Um, you got to lean into back it. In there. I got to lean into the curse. And if people can say they're high about passports, I'm just going to uh, tell that caller I've got, you know, they I've got two passports. Yeah. I've got two passports. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got to actually, we've got to fight back against these people because they, <laughs> you stick your head up and they try and blame. We can't be one of those countries that 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 slams initiatives, you know? And, yep. and your initiative and your, you know, your gumption and your Kiwi battler spirit to get over to these games needs to be respected. It may scuttle the game. That's fine. Oh, look. But it's not easy. The, the, the way you risk your marriage totally. year in and year out to support the teams you love. No that one mentions be, that. No one mentions the sacrifice that Grim Lane's making. No one mentions that. The absolute carnage that has been committed in your bank accounts. Absolutely. The, it, the amount of <laughs> unhappy trips that have been piled on your already gigantic mortgage. The amount of revenge purchases that come from my wife. <laughs> Untold amount of financial I, I don't give burden. a shit about that. And they don't give a shit about me arriving to work on a bloody Monday morning to do the Matt and Jerry breakfast show with a raging red wine hangover. <laughs> no no serotonin. No serotonin because I can't stop if I have two glasses of anything. I've, I'm in for the night. No one thinks about that. No one thinks about our freaking sacrifice that we make for these stupid things we do. So how about a bit of goddamn support out there exactly. in the sporting community? You know? Yeah, fuck South Canterbury. Yeah, fuck South Canterbury. Um, <laughs> last one of the yours, please. <laughs> yours, please. Yeah, g'day, Murray. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, just catching up on some uh, episodes after being over in Germany doing a recce for the um, pub crawl this year. And uh, on the All Black Suite, do you think they'd have a Ellie Williams concierge service where you can, uh, you know, go down and ask for an Ellie Williams and <laughs> someone will show up with some of that Parisian... Sneezing powder? Just a, just a thought. That's a good. That's the, that's referring back to when we discussed the All Blacks Hotel that yeah. has been mooted for the key park, and the fact that if it's going to be All Blacks Hotel, I'm expecting offer Tonga Fussy on the door, 
I want uh, Aaron Smith as the bellhop. I want um, <laughs> Ben from accounts in the back office. Uh, and this is referring to obviously Ali Williams and the and the baggy. Oh yeah, and the the, the baggy situation. Oh, sort of uh, like a baggy bellboy. Yeah. So you could ask for room service. I'm just ring up Ali Williams and I'm keen for a, <laughs> keen for a baggy, and it gets delivered to your room. But I think that's the only way you can have an All Blacks hotel is if they fully lean into it. it just, yeah. You got former All Blacks in there doing jobs. Otherwise, it's just going to be a you got a hotel. Terry Wright cleaning the toilets. Yeah. You got uh, John Gallagher, <laughs> and he's he's buying the bar, mixing cocktails, uh, smoking Joe who, Stanley. Who would, who would who would run it? Um, David uh, Kirk. I, I, you're David Kirk. David or, Kirk would be the, the, the running the the be, what do you call, what's the top the top job at a hotel? Tane manager? Randall. Tane, Tane Randall would be good. A very successful businessman. Yeah, but yeah. Obviously, Tane David Randall. Kirk. Maybe David Kirk. Maybe sit on the board. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Board of directors. But I, I, you know, I'd have Tane Randall running the joint. Yeah, Sean Fitzpatrick. You might want to have in some kind of leadership role. Yeah, I'd have Norm Hewitt behind the bar as well, mixing cocktails and putting. Yep. His, and you know, if you lock yourself out of his rear room, you'll smash through yep. the ranch slider and yep. get you in. Norm Hewitt. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> Do you think we can still get him? Yeah. Um, I mean, behind the desk, you probably want some good lookers behind the desk just to yep. welcome guests. So. Carlos Spencer kind yep. of situation. Yeah, absolutely. Carlos, you were probably talking. Um, who's the dream boat that uh, James McConey's in love with? Former chief. Oh, Richard Carhoe. Oh, Richard Carhoe. You want Richard Carhoe in there? Yeah, the there's menu. a concierge. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, um, you want Ruben Love there as well. And behind. Yep. I mean, imagine that. Imagine people would be queuing out the door to check in. You got room for Dan Carter in there? Yeah, potentially. Maybe, I don't know, work in the rooms. I can see Kieran Reid running a bar. Yeah. You know, running it. Running well, someone's going to run the restaurant. Upstairs. Who's running the buffet? Ian Foster? Yeah, Ian Foster. And Steve Hansen? You'd have Steve Hansen and, you know, you want people that are ex-buffet experts. <laughs> you want, <laughs> we've got, I'd, love, I'd love the ad for it. And we've got a... <laughs> You have choices. You have choices. You can go to the, the Hanson or the Foster. <laughs> the Hanson Foster, the biggest buffet in, in Auckland. In Auckland. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that was a good session. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, yeah, you could have the baggy from it. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, the baggy. Look, it's a shame. That'll never happen. That yeah. hotel will never happen. But if it does, maybe we, we should build that fantasy hotel. So if you think suggest any other All Blacks for any other um, – Jobs within the All Black Hotel, let us know on the on the talkback or we'll slide into the DMs. Uh, but we'll be uh, back tomorrow with another agenda. Also, we'll be back tomorrow with the ACC Sportsbook, uh, which is on a bit of a heater if you got your pens out last week with, uh, with Carl from the TAB. So we'll be releasing that tomorrow as well. But until then, see you later. See you later. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast, brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.